Hello, I'm Bob Hoxie. I'm a horticulturalist, garden designer, and owner of Great Hill Horticultural Services. Since 2015, I've had the privilege of working with the Brewster Historical Society on developing a historically appropriate landscape for the 1799 Elijah Cobb House. I designed the gardens, I consulted on their installation, and I've grown and planted all the heirloom annuals and perennials ever since. I based the gardens on the diary of Caroline Atherton Dugan. She was the granddaughter, a great-granddaughter, of Elijah Cobb. And in 1873, she began to write extensively about her flower garden and its extensive blooms of sweet peas, calendulas, and nasturtiums. In one memorable passage, perhaps inspired by the English poet William Blake, she talks about tiger lilies burning bright under the smoke tree. And here, recreated as best we could in modern times, is a garden dedicated to Caroline, or Caro as she was called, using some of her plants and some modern additions when appropriate. These are the sweet peas. They're an annual, very fragrant, very colorful. They climb and they will bloom probably until the middle of August or so. They don't really like the heat. So if you have a cooler summer, then they'll do better. They were very common in the 19th century and we've recreated a uh, sort of a little tower for it just using some bamboo poles and some jute string that they can climb up. We do that every year. I start the sweet peas in late winter in a cold frame just the way they would have done in the 19th century and then when they're ready in early May I put them out and build a tower and um, in a few weeks they'll be blooming just like this. You're seeing them kind of at their peak. Behind the sweet pea tower, you can see the, the smoke tree that Carol mentioned in the diary. It's small, so it hasn't got room underneath yet for the tiger lilies, but we'll be sure to match that up as it grows. It's a great plant. It uh, grows as a shrub or a small tree, and it has these sort of pastel cloud-like blooms all over it. And again, that was a plant that was common in her time and should be a little more popular today. Alongside the sweet peas, we have nasturtiums, another great old-fashioned plant that was very common in the 19th century. And again, I grow those in a cold frame in late spring. They're hardened off and they will perform well throughout the year. Next to the nasturtiums is a very old perennial ladies mantle and if you can see there are little drops of water on the leaves and the Latin name for that is Alchemella mollis from alchemy and the reason for that was it was thought that the water droplets on the leaves resembled mercury which was a favorite uh, element of the alchemists. In front of the ladies mantle I've planted a couple annuals that were typical of Carolyn's time and were very popular in the 19th century England particularly. Uh, there's Dusty Miller, which is the silver foliage, and the red sort of spires are celosia. Red celosia and the silver of the Dusty Miller make a great color combination. And if you're lucky, and sometimes the Dusty Miller will live through the winter and if it comes up the second year it will send up yellow uh, yellow flowers daisy like flowers behind the celosia the tall blue star-shaped blue flowers are the herb borage that's a very old plant um, and it's perfect for attracting pollinators and bees and it will bloom for a long time and then sort of die back but I've used a little garden trick here so that as the borage dies back, the perennial um, mallow will grow up and have big pink flowers later in the summer. So I can just take the borage out, the mallow will grow up, and then the nasturtiums, which are blooming very well along the front here, will kind of fill in the back so you won't even notice that the, uh, there's a hole in the garden. 
Alongside of the borage is a annual and an old variety of the classic calendula or pot marigold. A lot of the modern varieties will grow short and they will stop blooming when it gets warm and they need a lot of deadheading but they sort of have a compact habit. This one is called Ice Princess. It's an heirloom and it tends to grow a little taller and it has that really clear yellow and with just a little care that will grow and bloom even into the fall sometimes. So that's some of the plants in Caro's garden. Now let's move over and to another garden and see uh, some more of our favorite plants. This is our sundial garden and it's a nice beautiful little restful spot under the birch trees with benches and an antique sundial. And in May and into almost the end of July, the stars of the garden are these beautiful foxgloves. Tall spikes of purple and white flowers with bell shapes so the bees can go right inside of them. Foxgloves are unusual because they're not an annual and they're not a perennial. They're a biennial. Now that means that the first year they form these tight little clumps of leaves at the bottom of the ground called rosettes. And they'll grow that way through the season and then in the spring of the following year they'll start sending up these beautiful spikes of flowers. They'll bloom for about six uh, weeks and then the seeds pods will start to form and what I usually do is to leave the seed pods on them and they will go to seed and I'll start to notice little seedlings at the bottom of the plants and those will be the plants that will grow through the fall and bloom for next year. And that was how in Caro's time and even today you can have a sustaining population of uh, foxgloves and not have to buy new plants every year. And if you wanted to get a head start, you could buy the plants already growing in the nursery, put them in your garden, let them flower for the first year. Just be sure to leave a couple of the flower spikes on them to go to seed and carefully let the seedlings come up around the plants. And then you'll have seeds um, and young plants that will grow over the spring and bloom for you again. Uh, some of the other plants we have in the garden are the little white flowers along the bottom, which is uh, sweet alyssum. And as time goes on, they'll form a nice little ring around the edges. And I tend to add plants as the season goes on because I don't like a garden to look the same in the end of August as it does in the beginning of the season. So I'll be adding flowers and putting different things in, cutting things back. Uh, it's a real flower garden, and I think that's kind of in the spirit of what uh, the gardens were like at the time when um, the house was lived in by Caro and her family. A couple of the other plants we have uh, growing in the garden will be delphiniums and the little white alyssums growing all around the edges. There's yarrow and some other heirloom plants that uh, were common in the time of, uh, well, the 1870s. Thanks for visiting the gardens today, and if you're on Cape Cod this summer, be sure to stop by and see the gardens in person, and to tour the impeccably restored 1799 Elijah Cobb House.